What's going on guys, Drop Dusky here. Today we're going to do a crash course on fossil crafting. Now with Blight starting in just a couple of hours, I thought it'd be a really good idea to give you the rundown and basically the order of operations for fossil crafting from A to Z. Now if you're a brand new player, this is gonna be really, really helpful in the upcoming league. Now for today's example, we will be utilizing gloves, but what I'm gonna show you today will be a way that you can do this for any slot that you need to craft for either your character or that you want to put up for sale on the market. So without further ado, let's jump into it. The first thing we're going to talk about is how to decide on what base to use or what type of the specific slot that you're looking for before you begin to craft. Now the tool that you're going to want to utilize here is definitely PoE Wiki. Now PoE Wiki uh, we're going to use gloves as our example today, lists all of the available types, no matter what you're looking for. So whether it's gloves or body armor or boots or any of that, you can come here, type in the search bar at the top, and then it's going to spit out a list of all the available glove types based on their, you know, their, their defensive stat, right? So you have armor evasion, you have uh, energy shield gloves, you have evasion type gloves. Here specifically today, the outcome that I would like to go for is a pair of melee gloves, right? So for a melee character, typically, if it's a strength-based tune, you're gonna wanna go with Berserker or Slayer. So in that instance, we're gonna want to stack armor, right? So what I'm going to look for is go to the PoE Wiki, and right away, there you go. We can see the highest level or best that I would consider is going to be your spiked gloves. The reasoning behind that is that for each, for almost every tier, there is going to be one set of gloves that has an implicit value, right? So for a spellcaster, for instance, fingerless silk gloves that you can only get after level 70 come with an implicit value that is 12 to 16% increased spell damage, right? So for a caster, this implicit is inherently going to impact your build in a positive way. For our example today, since say we were trying to do Cyclone, we would want to do spiked gloves as they have a 16 to 20% increased melee damage implicit. Now you're not always going to have this available to you, right? Sometimes you may want to do cyclone on a dexterity based character and you need to stack evasion or other things. When doing this and when selecting a base, you want to come to the PoE wiki and take a look, right? If we wanted to real quick, since we're talking generally about fossil crafting and how to pick bases, We'll throw boots up there in the search bar, and once again, boom, you're gonna get them listed out based on strength and the defensive class, so dexterity, evasion. You're gonna to get to see all the different availables. And one thing that I'll also note here before we move on to the next step, is even if they don't have uh, an implicit value that's, that's beneficial, like dragon scale boots, as you can see here, they're a base level of 65 and their armor and evasion level is 121. Whereas if we're looking at leather scale boots, their armor and evasion starting level is only 12. It's a low level item. So if you have to pick something that doesn't have a beneficial implicit value, make sure to pick the highest potential defensive stat that comes as its base with 0% quality. Now that we've selected our base, I wanna talk about the next step in the order of operations for crafting. And that is, to make sure that your implicit value is maximized, right? So the, if this glove has a set of a, a set implicit value, which is 16 to 20 increased melee damage, as you can see there, in order to get that up, you should never put up an item as far as I'm concerned. If you're gonna sell an item, there's no point in not taking blessed orbs and re-rolling that implicit value until you hit max, right? Ours is already at max, but I'll demonstrate here. There's four potential outcomes, right? So in four blessed orbs, which worked out really nice mathematically there, I went from 20, I hit all the, the other options and came back to 20 in per percent increased melee damage. If there's an implicit on the item that you're potentially going to craft, make sure to utilize your blessed orbs so that you can then max that out and make it worth even more to either yourself or a potential buyer out on the market. Now next, before we get into the super, super badass tool that we're gonna use for fossil crafting, and you guys can use this for everything going forward in the future, it's so nice. We're gonna talk about two specific fossils that won't be impacted there. That is the perfect fossil and the enchanted fossil. 
Now, the Enchanted Fossil does just as it says. If you're doing helmets, gloves, or boots, using this fossil on a set of gloves or one of those three will give you a random enchantment. Now, the reason we want to do this before we do any crafting is when you utilize this fossil and use it on a pair of gloves or boots or helm, it's going to enchant it, but it will also either upgrade that normal to a rare or it will re-roll the modifiers of that rare item, right? So you don't want to craft out the ideal prefixes and suffixes that you're looking for before you use an enchant fossil as it's going to re-roll those modifiers when you do it. So we've gone through blessed orbs, make sure to get that implicit up, then use an enchant if applicable, right? The only other way to get an enchant if you've already got like GG modifiers and you don't want to mess with that is to spam run the the labyrinth so that you can then use the enchant at the end to potentially get yourself a good enchant. Next, we're going to talk, talk about perfect fossils. Now, perfect fossils, as it reads, applies to weapons, body armor, gloves, boots, helmets, shields, and maps. What this does is it increases the quality of a specific item. Now, you can also increase that quality, in, that quality with an armor scrap, but the issue here is that armor scraps can only max out at a possible 20% quality at its height, right? So using armor scraps, you can get it all the way up to 20%. A perfect fossil can go to 30%, right? So it has the availability to roll, I think it's between 14 or 15 and 30%. So if you have a couple of perfect fossils laying around, you're gonna wanna use these because the more quality equals more defensive stat on that item. So as we looked, let's just pull that up again real quick. If we go back to gloves, and look at the spiked gloves. Uh, our base armor value is 220 on spiked gloves. If we take a look after it getting it up to level 28, we're now at 282 armor, right? Which is giving you another 62 armor for that increased 28% quality. Now, perfect fossils are not cheap. And so typically I'll shoot for any range between 27 and 30%. But if I'm going to be crafting an item that's either, either GG for me, or I really want to make some good money on, then I'm going to use a perfect fossil to, to squeak out every little bit of armor or energy shield or dexterity, or excuse me, evasion, any of those things as I can. So remember, blessed orbs, enchant, perfect fossil. Okay, so we've gone through this whole path. We have everything set up. Let's talk about acquiring fossils and what tool to use. Next, we're going to take a look at this image, which I will put in the document that we'll put in the description below. This image has the location of all different types of fossils, right? So you can use it as a quick cheat sheet. These are really, really useful. And when you're in the delve, you know, if I'm in the fungal caverns, I can get aberrant, corroded, perfect, dense, and gilded fossils, right? You're going to want to keep this. And after a while, you'll start understanding and remembering where these fossils are located. So once you've acquired the fossils you need, this tool, which I will have a link in the description below, is a super winner for you guys, and you guys will be able to craft anything you want with fossils, okay? On PoEDB, there is a Delve Fossil Crafting Simulator, basically, right? So for today's example, we want to do gloves. They're going to be strength. You select that from the dropdown, and now we have all our available fossils that we could potentially roll on these gloves. Now, for a good pair of Cyclone gloves, there's a couple of things we're looking for. We'd want max life, we'd want attack speed, we'd want physical damage, and then as a bonus, we'd love to have some resistances, right? So for myself specifically, I know pristine fossils can give you life. So if you notice, when we use this tool, if I select pristine, I've now got a plus one next to maximum life, a plus one to physical attack damage leached as life, life gained on kill. This fossil simulator is now showing me that by utilizing this pristine fossil, I have a higher likelihood of hitting these mods, right? All of them that are there are possible outcomes, but a plus one means that I have a higher likelihood of hitting these things, right? This tool is so badass, okay? So I want attack speed, right? Shuttering, more speed modifiers. We click shuttering. Now we have a plus one on attack speed. We have uh, this cast speed is now, this uh, socketed gems is supported by faster attacks and increased attack speed. Uh, hybrid mod, we have this plus to maximum life and increased life. So this is looking pretty damn solid. Now you could just roll right there and then hope 
like YOLO hope that you get, you know, some resistances or some other things. I also like to toss in a serrated when making these sometimes. So that's going to give me another higher likelihood of getting physical damage to attacks and other things that are going to be beneficial as far as it comes to damage, doing damage with these gloves, right? So now that you've understood this tool and you've seen this tool, you can use this for literally anything you want to craft with fossils, right? We want to do boots. We want to do strength boots. Let's see what the outcome would be with the life fossil. Uh, elemental fossil is giving me plus one to resistances. The shuddering fossil is going to give me plus one to movement speed. So right there, pristine, uh, prismatic, and shuddering. Now I've given a higher likelihood of getting max life, movement speed, and good resistances on these boots, right? This tool is basically like cheating when it comes to fossil crafting. So now that we've covered this stuff, let's recap real quick. We're going to have an image in the document that gives you the locations of all the fossils. And we've got a tool in the description, in the document in the description below, that will tell you that will basically be a template that you can show what the higher likelihood is going to be when crafting an item. This is like this is going to be so beneficial to you in the upcoming leagues, right? So now that we've utilized our tool, we've seen that, yes, we want to use uh, serrated, shuttering, pristine. Let's just throw a couple rolls out and see if we get lucky, right? We may not, but that's okay because today's video is specifically for showing you guys that these tools exist and that they can make your life super damn easy. Okay, let's grab a gray or a, uh, a normal resonator as because these are normal uh, you can then upgrade them to a rare so we're going to use one of each fossil and one thing i want to mention that we didn't touch on before you can scour the item after quality and enchant and you don't lose quality and enchant right so if this is bad i'll show you when we scour so we're going to roll this boom we got our physical damage we got Oh, shit. We got T1 Fizz, we got T1 Attack Speed, and we got T2 Life. And we got some accuracy on this thing with an open suffix and an open prefix. So we could throw, you know, some, some resistances on these. We could throw something out there really quick. These are going to be pretty damn sweet, right? Let's take... Let's take another pair of gloves just an ex as an example. These are evasion, but we're going to still try and roll them the same way just, just for the lulls, right? So to show you what I'm talking about, we take a perfect fossil here. This has no quality on it. We go boom. We've got 30% quality, one roll, right? We want to also enchant these things just to, you know, make sure we have some sort of enchant. Commandment of Fury on hit. Okay, so 30 quality. We have an enchant. Boom, scour them down, still 30 quality, still enchant. Now we can start rolling these things. So we're going to go speed, we're going to go life, and we're going to go serrated. And we're going to not use that resonator because it's now normal. Remember, yellow is for rare and gray is for normal. Let's use these fossils once again. We're going to hit those in there really quickly. Pop them on, boom. T1 Fizz, decent life roll, percent life, life gained on kill, but we didn't get the attack speed, right? I did want to do one where we at least showed that this is no guarantee. When utilizing the tool, it's going to give you an outline of a higher likelihood modifiers that you will roll. At this decision point, you can do anything that you want. You can go to the bench, add an additional prefix. You can, you know, if you've got less mods or you want to get risky, you could say, hey, okay, I want to try and annul the life gained on kill off of the, the deal and then multi-mod the item and see if I can make something really, really nice. We'll try and life gained on kill. See, we didn't hit it. You know, I'm just playing around at this point, but you guys get the idea. So for today's video, I really hope that this helped you guys out. This is generic across the board right normally we do these piece by piece and we will go back to that to do some very targeted specific specific crafting for maybe some higher level stuff like weapons and whatnot but i thought this would be a really cool thing for you guys as the blight league starts you know we utilize fossils more than anything when it comes to crafting nowadays so if you follow these steps that will be detailed in the document in the description below you can go out there and craft anything that you need guys thank you so much for checking out this video if you haven't seen the twitch stream it's twitch.tv slash i'm going to be streaming all weekend long for blight's launch and then 
We're gonna go to a Monday through Friday schedule where from eight to noon, I'll be playing WoW Classic, and from two until six or seven, we'll be playing Path of Exile every day, Monday through Friday. Thank you guys so, so much. Come on by the Twitch stream. Please let me know in the comments if you liked this video. I normally know we normally break it down by the individual pieces, but I think this is perfect for a league start. Everybody, good luck on the launch, and we'll see you out there. Peace.